Preston Physics Grade 11 Forces Note 3 Friction, Static and Kinetic. When we're looking at friction, there's two different types of friction. The two types are static and kinetic. Now, when we look at static friction, this means that the friction is being applied to something when it's not moving. So there's no motion. Static means not moving, it's still. An example of this would be a horse trying to pull a sled, but the sled isn't moving yet. It's not able to pull that sled, so the static friction is holding it back. Now, kinetic friction, kinetic friction is a little bit different. It's when two objects are rubbing together. You could think of like your hands rubbing together. When you rub your hands together, they get warm. They're getting warm because of static friction. There's a force that's repelling this motion. It doesn't want this motion to happen. That's kinetic friction. The example we're going to use is the sled again, but now it's moving. You can also think of static friction as two objects, one being kind of rigid and then another one actually being placed on top of it. But all of its ridges fit right into that bottom object, so it's really hard to move. So there's no motion. With kinetic friction, we have the exact same kind of situation, but instead of the objects fitting in perfectly, the top object just kind of bumps along on top of all those ridges. So it's got some motion, and then therefore it's kinetic. Now when we actually look at drawing these forces, we're going to look at four situations here. The first three are going to be static friction, because static friction is always equal to the force applied until the object moves. In the first diagram, the force applied and the force of friction static are equal. The second diagram, we have the same thing, but they're a little bit greater. The third diagram, we're going to show the exact same thing, but again, they're the same. They're greater though. And then in the fourth diagram, the force applied is finally greater than the force of static friction. So now we're dealing with kinetic friction, which if you notice, is far less. So the force applied is greater than the force of friction. And we actually get motion and acceleration in the right direction. Now the top three diagrams here are static friction, and the bottom diagram is showing kinetic friction. One thing you want to notice here is that the static friction is actually always greater than kinetic friction. And if we look at this, it actually makes sense because it's harder to start something moving than it is to actually keep it moving. So that would mean that the force of friction is greater when the object's not moving than when it is. Now we're going to look at how to calculate the force of friction on an object. And when we're looking at this, we have to keep in mind that there's going to be two objects in question. The object that's being moved and the object that it's moving against. We use force of friction equals mu force normal, or mu times the normal force where FF is the force of friction in newtons, FN is the normal force, also in newtons, and mu is the coefficient of friction. It's actually a number that's been calculated by numerous experiments that tells us how hard it is for an object to move on those two surfaces, or within those two surfaces, and it's unitless. For each set of surfaces that we look at, there's always going to be two mu values though. There's going to be one for kinetic and one for static friction. This is again because it's harder to start something moving than to keep it moving. Therefore, we have two different friction values for each set of surfaces. We will look at the investigation tomorrow in class together. The questions from the duotang for this note are 5 to 8. This note will also help you a little bit with question four. 